All right, here we have Asafa Powell. I want to draw your attention because I spent uh, some time with Stephen Francis and Asafa Powell. Michael Freyta, Nesta Carter, Shelly Ann Fraser, Melaine Walker, that group for uh, quite some time. Um, I want to draw your comparison to this because I found these pictures in some old emails that I was digging through and I thought, oh, this is interesting. So, Asafa Powell, as you can see here, I want to just draw your attention to the stance that he has in the block. Um, I just wanted to destroy your attention to this because it's quite unique in the sense that he has quite a low stance. You'll see that his knee is not, is quite far away from his body. Obviously you'll notice the heel, the foot on the back pedal is quite high. Not everyone is built to handle this. Um, but if, again, I just want to draw your attention he has quite a low stoop, um, so hips are quite high in comparison to where his head is. But then as a result of that, it gives uh, this result. So he pushes that front arm forward, gets a good swing. As you notice in all of these videos, he has a really high extension or of the arm at the back. And he does a great job of pulling that rear leg through really quickly. So he pulls this three before this rear leg or his left foot even gets into extension. So he does a great job of that. So as you can see, this right leg is pushing forward and it's following the line of his head and what his arm does too. Now, that's me over there. If you look at the difference in comparison now, I wasn't, was unsuccessful at that because I just wasn't strong enough. However, in the group, we all adopted this type of start because um, it helped us to then land a little bit more midfoot and not toey. So we were all landing dorsiflex as opposed to plantar flex. I just struggled with it. But again, you can see the difference in comparison. My knee is a lot closer to my body and I'm a lot closer to the line. Everything's a little bit more bunched. Hips are even higher than Asifa's. I'm just slightly closer. But that's my build and that's how I thought was right for me to start. And you can see the comparison of what it does when I push out. So yes, I get a good extension of the arm, but you can see it pushes me up. Because I'm so bunched. It's the only way it allows my body to get any form of freedom. Or my legs any form of freedom. So at no point am I ever pushing forward. I've just pushed my efforts up that way. Now, there's nothing right or wrong with this. It just shows a difference in comparison to styles of running. All right, And with what Asafa did, it then results in this. This was Asafa running uh, 977 in 2006. This was six years before I then went to train with him. So I'm in this lane here, lane two, and As Asafa's here. So most of you would just be amazed by what he's done time-wise. But the result of his race is dictated by what he just does at the beginning. So if I draw this back, you will see everyone's pretty much clear at the start. So if it does what he does best, good. Rear extension of the arm. A couple of other guys do that too. But it's what he does that really dictates the outcome of the race. When everyone lands and pushes up with the knee or try to get into 90 degrees, he just pushes, he continually pushes his knee forward. And at no point does his heel lift up. It just continues to go in a forward direction. So his head remains that way. His torso stays fixed and his knees are always, always driving forward. Even his compatriot, Lester, uh, Michael Freyta, does the same. You never at any point see his heel come up at all. Everything is just going forward. Now, when you look at me in lane two, if you watch this heel, it's continuously picking up. So let me get rid of the cursor. It continuously picks up. You can see it goes almost like a cycling action.
Whereas even, what's this, 10, 12, 13 meters? As it's coming up, it's pulling forward. All right, he does, does a good job of that, better than anybody else. Still leaning forward. Good dorsiflex of the fleet. Head still dictating the direction that he wants to go in. It's only now does his head come up and we're at 10, 20, 30 meters. Now he gets into max velocity where he's had a good maintenance of speed. Everyone's had their head up and doing their thing way back here. It just continues to pull that heel of his forward. And with it, the heel always coming over knee height, he has not the need to think about driving his knee up to 90 degrees because it's all being done by what he's doing with the heel pushing it forward. So by always pushing the heel forward, it always keeps you in a forward moving direction. Also, you'll notice how well he does this, pulls the heel forward and gets his foot into extension while he's in the air. So he lands on a straight leg. That's what makes what these Jamaicans have been doing and what's made them so dominant over years. He gets himself into full extension whilst in the air. So at no point does he even drop a stride. He doesn't drop no hip height. Even somebody as short as Michael Freyta, leg extension, he's maximising everything he can. Again, you can see how important this is. It's not flicking up towards the heel. The heel is not flicking up towards the butt. It continues to be pulled forward. Again, extension while he's in the air. Lands on a straight leg. Moving leg follows through. Again, leg extension. Slight lean of the torso. Here you can see Max Lewis Francis, this, again, this is where we will, uh, some athletes will struggle. I'm not drawing any bad comparison to Mark. You can just use this as an example. You can see this heel is picking up massively. Again, I do the same. And look how far back it is. Big gap. I'm near getting a bit of extension, touching ground, but my heel is way up here. Whereas Asafa's does it even come close. It pulls forward. And he just continues to do that. Whereas the rest of us, again, look at this. Massive. And that's me there. So with a few little changes, I could have run a lot better. And this was Asafa running 977. Um, Michael Freiter and I, I think Freiter ran 1005. I ran 1006. All right, so that was drawing a comparison there. Hopefully we'll get a head-on shot. You can see, again, nice relaxation. There ain't any ounce of tension in this body whatsoever. None. And it's important to stay relaxed. It's one of the hardest skills to accomplish relaxation when under pressure and trying to run as fast as possible. But if you older athletes can think about when you were a child and you were playing in the street or in the park, you never had any ounce of relax, uh, tension in your muscles. The only tension you will feel is obviously when you're on the starting blocks, when you push, you feel a little bit on your feet. But these things are going to be a little bit more acute when you're in training because you have time to think, you have time to rehearse, you have time to analyse, you have time to repeat the runs over and over again. And you're going to be a little bit more sensitive because you'll feel everything. Now, there's a difference between the sensations and the feeling in training and the senses and the feelings in competition. And athletes always say, oh, it felt odd, I felt rubbish, because you can't put the two together. The sensations you feel in training cannot be compared to the sensations you feel in competition. They're two different things. Training is your revision, your rehearsal. You're, you're allowed to make mistakes there. And you're allowed to make mistakes in competition because it's all part of learning. But the sensations you feel in training cannot be compared to the sensations you feel in competition. So don't think 
the relaxation you felt in training to be like, yeah, I can carry that to competition because it won't feel the same. You won't feel your feet landed on the ground. You won't feel your arms swinging. You won't feel none of that because your mind has been taken to somewhere where it matters. Train, the pressure of a competition doesn't leak into training. The pressure of competition is felt in competition. So when you're in competition mode, that is time for you to go out and execute as best as you can. And providing you've done the right things in training, hopefully you should have a good result. And again, please do not use training, competition, sorry, please do not use competition as an opportunity to get race ready. You need to be race ready in training. That's your time to revise. That's your time to get prepared. So don't use races to get ready. You should be ready in training. So when you compete, you can maximise all your opportunities. Go out and perform to the best ability. The better you perform, the more opportunity to opportunities that will be created. And this is a guy who's run under 10 seconds over 100 times. And he does the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, he's very, very disciplined and you can see he's been doing this for a long time and he looks exactly the same. Nothing's changed. Let me fast forward that a bit for you. So from a side view, which we'll get now. These are the best ones. I like the side views. So now you'll see... I'm here, Anna Asafa, Mark Lewis Francis, Marlon Devonish, Harry Aitin, Zariti's there too. Watch how well he pushes out the block and spends very little time on the ground. He establishes his ankle to knee height from the get-go. Has a low sweep, but maintains a good extension with the arm, good bend in the arm. He maintains that. We all pretty much do. You know, it ain't much... To, shit, to, this, to, the, to argue about here. But watch out where we land and keeps pulling. Lands, pull. Land, pull. All right, so we all kind of do that. You can see the difference between his pull and everyone's picking up of the heel at the back. If you look at my leg, it starts to circle. It's a circling action. I wasn't aware of this at the time. Didn't know about that. It wasn't taught to me. So I just ran instinctively. But if I could have got better extension while in there at the beginning and a better pulling action, I ain't saying I would have beat him, but I would have run a better time. As you can see, the difference it makes... So it's happened naturally. Good dorsiflex of the feet. No pointing down on the toes. Some people call it flat footed, but it's not. It's just a better way for you to land. Because you use landing dorsiflex uh, allows your feet to land on the widest part of your foot, which allows your feet to splay. When you plant a flex, you're landing on a very, very small area. Obviously, the toes. And your toes are not strong enough to handle the weight of gravity pulling you back down onto the ground. And again, you can see the gap between here and here is consistent. It never gets any bigger. Once he's established his stride length from 10, 15, 20 metres back, he maintains that and he holds this form. Yes, angles are here, you can argue, but you can see there's much, there's way bigger gap here for me. And it's not as big here for Asafa. You could argue the clam is a little bit close, but it's obvious to see the gap between my knee and my calf is way bigger than the gap between his knee and his calf. Again, I don't need to repeat, you can just see. And again, you can see the big, big gap here. So if I were to able to bring this leg down a little bit quicker and pull this knee through a bit quicker, again, my result would have been different. Again, losing it here. Too much extension at the front. Lazy foot, that should be going back down. And if I am extending a lot of the front here, it needs to be consistent with the left foot too. 
but right now I'm extending with the a little bit with the left and massively extending with the right so you can see I'm all over the place here and again with some fine tuning a little bit of time and attention towards what I was doing my outcome would have been better so let's draw that back for you one more time so you can see it in real time So when you see these amazing times, it's an application of what they're doing and rehearsal of this in training, which makes them stand out and perform to the best of their ability.